It's been eight years and 199 races. And now we're lined up to put another race in the books. 200. From the heart of Indiana, in the shadow of the Brickyard, the Hooters Pro Cup Series kicks into high gear for the 200th time. Race number 200 for the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series comes your way from Indianapolis Raceway Park. Today, it's the Lucas Oil 200 presented by Hair Auto Group. Hello, everybody. I'm Gene Crane alongside of Scott Sutherland and down on Pitt Road is Stephen Cox to cover all the action here in this northern division of the Pro Cup Series. Scott, the weekend started off a little bit rough, a little bit of wind here at Indianapolis Raceway Park, but nonetheless, some chilly temperatures. Well, 50 degrees and the wind blowing like this, it's not a very nice day, but you know what? They're still out here. They're still going to watch a fantastic race, and I'm excited. Earlier yesterday, Advanced Auto Parts poll qualifying was held, and once again, a gentleman that knows his way around Indianapolis Raceway Park is up front. Stephen Cox is with him. At Indianapolis Raceway Park, two one-thousandths of a second can be worth $1,000. Brian Ross is your pole sitter. Brian, you just barely got this pole. You came out here, you practiced last week, and you've got a lot of laps here. So what did you find out, and how did it play into the pole run? Well, we come out here uh, Monday, and uh, we was really tied off the corner, and uh, we kept working on being able to pick the throttle up and drive the car off the corner uh, with the throttle, you know, and, uh, you know, the Speedco U.S. Insurance Ford uh, ran real good last night in qualifying. Uh, you know, we first time we've been in a Pro Cup car this year and put it on the pole. So, you know, I'd like to thank Van Solid Parts for, you know, they're putting up the pole award money. It's always something for us to shoot for, and hopefully we have a pretty good day. Well, he hasn't been in a race car all winter long, but he comes out here and he wins the pole. I put my money on him every time he comes to IRP. And Indiana, it doesn't matter where you're at. Brian Ross is a good bet. Let's get racing. Well, Sam Borden representing the Make-A-Wish Foundation of Indiana with a spirited call there. The Speedco Truck Lubes Ford of Brian Ross on the pole, and Brian promised he'd get a pole for him just prior to Advanced Auto Parts pole qualifying yesterday, and he delivered. I think Sam's got more, uh, more going on, a little bit more enthusiasm than Brian Ross does right now. Wow. And, of course, Brian Ross with a chance to pick up the win from the pole award from Tucson, and that has not been claimed yet this year. So a good opportunity there as well. Maybe we'll get a first-time winner in that Tucson win for the pole award. Warming up the motors and getting set to rumble around Indianapolis Raceway Park. Scott, let's take a look at this layout here in Indianapolis. Well, it sure is a great racetrack to come to. It's a long straightaway, big, long sweeping corners. The unique thing about this, you're going to go right up against the wall. These guys are going to slide the car up, get a great run off the corner. It's going to be a fantastic afternoon. The sun is really not going to bake the racetrack, so the speeds are going to stay way up today. Tire issues doesn't seem to be a problem as far as tire wear, so we can take that out of the picture. I think the best race car wins a race here today. Field rumbles away, 46 cars on the grounds for this 200th race of the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series. 32 cars getting in on speed and four provisionals making up this afternoon's starting grid. In fact, 10 cars having to pack up and go home, including Logan Dernoshek, Jeff Oakley, Brandon Wallace, Gabby DiCarlo trying to make her first start in the series, Mike Hampton, Roger Blackstock, Mike Wilson Jr., Randy Van Zant, Scott Drake, and Eric Fitzpatrick all having to load up. And Scott, the intensity in the competition in this series has certainly increased in 2005. Well, I think you hit the nail right on the head. This thing is really escalated up. In other words, eight-tenths of a second separates the whole field. And if you're not within that eight tenths, and that's just a blink. I mean, it's a lot, it, it is hard to get within that just to make the race. So you really got to be on your toes. Crew chiefs are pulling their hair out trying to get this thing done. And in fact, Glenn Galt's crew chief probably pulling his hair out right now already because the 32 car has dropped down to come to pit road. That's going to put that 32 car all the way at the back of this 36 car starting field. Well, I think it's very simple. They look at what the weather is. They're about, they're towards the back of the pack. They don't, they don't have a real good car, and they look at the weather, see what it's going to be today. They're going to bring them in, make a spring change before this race even starts. 
try to hit something because it's going to be cool, it's going to be cloudy, overcast pretty much all day. And Scott, if you're going to lose track position, this is probably the best time to do it. Well, you cannot afford to try to make a spring change during a regular caution. So they're going to take this opportunity, go ahead and make it a change on the car. The worst thing that happens, they have to start in the back of the field. Not a big deal if you think your car is that much better. It's a long day. Let's take a look at our starting grid for this afternoon. It's Lucas Oil 200 presented by the Hair Auto Group for the sixth time in his career. Brian Ross will lead the field from the Advanced Auto Parts pole alongside him, the defending champion, Clay Rogers. Benny Gordon will start from the inside of row number two, and 19-year-old Shelby Howard will bring the 20 car from the outside. We're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Danny Salmon starts fifth on the inside of row three in the 97, and Johnny Rumlin will go from the outside in car number eight. Row number four, Mike Laughlin Jr. in the seven car. He'll line up there on the inside. Looked like he was going to be a winner last year. It didn't come to pass. And the most recent winner, Joel Kaufman, starting on the outside. Jeff Agnew in the 73 car. A, a make change there. They go to the Ford here for this event. And Marty Lindley on the outside of row number five in car 16. Eric Corbin in the 75 car. He will start to the inside. And up on the outside, Tim Bainey Jr. in car 15. Row number seven, we'll see a young Travis Miller, the highest qualifying rookie in today's starting field of the 98, and DJ Kennington from Canada starting up on the outside. Row number eight, Martin Esbitt in the 88 starts inside, and Lonnie Rush Jr., car number 71, will start from the outside. He's got previous experience here at IRP. Row number nine, the leading rookie so far in this Northern Division, A.J. Frank on the inside, and Jason Mignon in the 07 has a decent qualifying effort. Row number 10, Woody Howard in the 55. Kind of a surprise to see this rookie this far back in the starting field. Sam Fallone in the 48 car starting alongside. Row number 11, Gary St. Amon, another surprise deeper in the field. The 11 car starting on the inside, and Joe Gata in the 42 starting alongside. Row number 12, Leslie Law starts the 68 from the inside, and smiling Glenn Gall will start the 32 from the outside, at least scheduled to. He'll go to the tail of the pack for the start. Randy Humphrey goes from the inside of row number 13 in that 93 car and making his first start here in the Pro Cup Series is Jim Crabtree Jr. Row 14 is Jeremy Miller, the rookie from Fairfield, Iowa. Get in to Rod Miller Construction alongside Vince Pinello from Livonia, Georgia, Elite Auto Collision. Michelle Theriot returns to the Northern Series. Good to see you back. And Chris Limerick, young man, has had some real good runs putting it together back at IRP. Making his first start here in the Pro Cup Series is Aaron Pierce in the 62 car. He is joined by J.J. Pack in the 06 in row 16. Row 17, we move to the Provisionals. Joe Harrison Jr. in the 57 car, and Jimmy Spencer takes the 36 from the outside of that 17th row. Anderson, Indiana's Greg Vidal starts the 35 car on the inside of row 18, and our final starter this afternoon from over in Winburg, Pennsylvania, Robbie Marhefka in the 12 car. 36 cars lined up behind the Hair Auto Group pace car for the Pro Cup Series this afternoon. And let's note that Glenn Galt is back on track, although all the way back at the rear of the field for this start. Let's take a look at our onboard cameras. We'll ride along with Johnny Rumley and the Lucas Oil Chevrolet number eight this afternoon, a forward look out of the front of the eight car. We'll also ride along with the 15, the Grease Lightning Ford of Tim Bainey Jr. Carrying our third on board here this weekend, Shelby Howard in the 20 car. Naturally fresh on board camera. Watch Shelby saw at the wheel here this weekend. And saw you will. He's going to show us how to get around this racetrack. Heavy on the gas pedal. Well, Stephen, several teams have had some problems here so far this weekend. Gene, I want you to keep an eye on A.J. Frank today. He's going to start at the back of the pack. He's your rookie points leader, but they lost a clutch in qualifying. They had to fix it. You can't touch the car after qualifications. That's a violation of the rules. He starts at the back. Big problems for A.J. No problems for Woody Howard, so they think. Woody got in the car just before the race started, and he told me, he said, you know, we were worried about the toe-in setting. We thought we might have a problem with it, but I took it out and qualified, and it seemed okay. So they are going to risk holding on to their 19th place starting position in the hopes that they can make up points in the rookie battle on A.J. Frank. And just a little bit more about Woody Howard. You know, they had a little bit of an altercation there in the last part of practice. Got the car back together just in time to get into the qualifying grid. They don't want to give up that starting position. I think that's the right choice. You want to stay in track position. If you're 20 or more towards the front, you need to be up in there and hang with that front group of cars. So we'll keep our eye on both. 
A.J. Frank and Glenn Gault all the way at the tail of the pack. But meanwhile, Brian Ross, the 46, his first start of 2005. He does it from the Advanced Auto Parts pole as Rico Elmore from Hair Auto Group waves the green flag and sends us racing here for the 200th time in the history of the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series. from the outside got the whole shot on Brian Ross. Well, the desired line is on the outside, and I'm really surprised that Brian Ross didn't choose to start on the outside. He has that option to go ahead and take that lead because the guy on the outside definitely has the advantage on the start of the race. Something we've seen at Winchester, Indiana, and Pro Cup Series races in the past. Ross, though, to the inside, kicks it sideways out of turn four, but nonetheless, got a fender alongside Clay Rogers, but elects to go nose to tail. Shelby Howard, here's another Indiana native to keep an eye on. This 19-year-old in that Pontiac, they built this car in, what, eight days? Yeah, well, they got the chassis with a little bit of body on it, but then you, it's a lot of work to put one of these together. I'm telling you, they burned the midnight oil to get this thing together in eight days. Well, they burned the midnight oil, but it's barbecue sauce on the side. Tony Stewart smoked barbecue sauce for this race team and Shelby Howard Howard in his second outing of the Pro Cup Series, putting the pressure on one of the veterans, Brian Ross of the 46. And not only a veteran, but the guy who really knows how to get around this racetrack, and that's Brian Ross. The thing he wants to do is just sit back and watch and learn as much as he can, and he's getting pressure from behind as well. Two-car team this weekend, Brian Ross in the Speedco Truck Loops Ford, number 46. He's teamed with Joe Gata in that 42 car. Just behind the top three, we see the 66 of Benny Gordon. Gordon had a strong car two weeks ago at Lonesome Pine in their own chassis. That's a chassis they built in their own shop. And Predator Performance Ford trying to close in on those first three, and now the battle once again heats up with Rogers getting some pressure from Ross. Clay Rogers with a great run. That car's really handling down the straightaways. Man, it's running. Terminal Trucking came on board. Great to say Terminal Trucking again. Glad to see him back in the race. It's been a long time. Good to see him back. You're exactly right. We're on board with Johnny Rumley, the Lucas Oil Chevrolet, trying to chase down those lead four drivers. Rumley in the eight car. This is a great shot, folks. This gives you an idea how long you're in the gas pedal. Seems like forever it takes to go down these straightaways. It's our Daytona, if you will. Let's watch the entrance as Rumley heads off into one. Drops it down, but like you said, Scott, starts to sweep it out. Shelby Howard in the 20 car. We go on board with a naturally fresh camera, working his way off a of turn two and down that back straightaway. Howard with his focus on the front as he heads towards turn three. The Lucas Oil 200, presented by Hair Auto Group, continues here from IRP. This telecast of the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series is brought to you by Hooters Restaurants, the official neighborhood restaurant of USAR. Lucas Oil. Lucas Oil is the worldwide leader in heavy-duty and high-performance lubricants. Miller Lite, the official beer of USAR. Miller Lite. Good call. And by Naturally Fresh. Pour it on with naturally fresh salad dressings, sauces, and dips. On board with Johnny Rumley here at Indianapolis Raceway Park in the Lucas Oil 200 and coincidentally riding along in the Lucas Oil Chevrolet Rumley. Just outside these lead four cars, the terminal trucking Ford of Rogers showing the way. Speedco truck loop Ford of Brian Ross giving chase. Ross is right now just following in the tire tracks. Well, they both want to run the same groove and there's only room for one. And, ooh, trying to make a move on the outside. He's going to make a stick. Woo. Almost got a run on Clay Rogers that time with Brian Ross. But let's take a look at the 10th place battle. Danny Sammons trying to size up Tim Bainey Jr. That rear-facing camera giving you a little bit of a perspective as Sammons dives to the inside over in turn two. Can he make it stick? That's a tough place to try to execute a pass. Yeah, it's really hard to get forward traction up off the corner because you're pulling the nose down so hard. Gets really flat on the bottom of the racetrack. You can make a pass there, but you better hurry up. It's only going to last about one or two laps. You get to the right side, it's really hot. You're going to have to move back up. Danny Sammons and that Edison Generator Automotive Center's Ford single uh, race sponsorship for Danny Sammons here this weekend. Right behind them, we see Lonnie Rush Jr. along with the 75 of Eric Corbett. All these cars trying to work their way towards the front and put on a good showing here this afternoon. Yeah. And Corbett thought he was going to be able to make that bottom groove work and get a spot, a spot on Danny Sammons. Left the door open. 
And uh, you just can't afford to do that. They're going to slide in on top of you and take the group away. Lonnie Rush Jr. in the 71 car getting some help from Ray Skillman here this weekend. Skillman, a well-accomplished late model racer from oh, Greenwood. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, Van Alst in trouble with the Ross car. Around goes Greg Van Alst. The 35 of Van Alst goes in the spin cycle. He's going to get it back underway. But Van Alst with a brand new sponsor, the StopBodyNails.com. Sponsorship on the side of his Pontiac. And he had both hands on the wheel. There's no way he was going to bite his nails that time. Well, the, the leaders had caught the back end of the tail end of the field. And it really got tight. I think Brian Ross thought he could see it, get a hole on the bottom, get a good run. And it just closed up in a hurry when it got down in the corner. Tight racing action. In fact, let's take another look at it as our leaders closed in on that lap traffic, including Greg Van Alst. Down in the corner, Ross, all the way down on the flat, Scott. Well, I think Van Ross was trying to get down out of the way. Didn't realize Brian Ross was underneath him. It just came down, and they had a little bit of contact, and around he went. Fortunate that everybody else didn't get into him. Scott, it took him down to the bottom side. Under caution here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. More to come. You're watching the Lucas Oil 200. Don't go away. First caution of the afternoon here at Indianapolis Raceway Park and one of our leaders involved, Brian Ross, getting collected somewhat and taking the Vinal 35 for a spin down in turn three. Let's take another look at it. Um, just a little bit, you know, trying to get down out of the way and just barely got into him, got him spun around. Steven is with Brian's car owner. Darren, tell me what happened out there. What do you mean what happened? I don't know. Ryan said somebody thought his fender might be messed up, but I didn't really see it. I seen that car spin down there. Uh, he said he, he could run away from Clayton if he could ever get around him. So getting around him is a question here, but Clayton's pretty fast. And uh, we're just excited to be here with the two race cars. Speed go brought a lot of people in today. And, uh, you know, I've been up at Brian and show, and Joe and Brian been doing a great job in this crew. And, you know, it's just good to be here. But it's good to see you, Stephen. I haven't seen you in a while. It's good to see you. Always full of words, isn't he? <laughs> Unfortunately for Darren, he's not real tall. He can't see over top of the toolbox. Come on, buddy, get up there. Really hard to see down in these corners. It's a long racetrack, so your spotter has to do all the work for you to fill you in on what's going on. Jeff Agnew on pit road. As the green comes out, Jeff Agnew brings the NGA Hooters Golf Tour forward to pit road. Restart. Sees what a two-car length advantage for Clay Rogers. We'll see if he's able to maintain it off of turn two. Meanwhile, behind them, some slipping and sliding as the field tries to work with lap traffic. And the big winner on that last spin, Aaron Pierce was just about to go a lap down. He, he was real lucky. The Central Indiana Chevrolet dealer's car, lucky that he didn't get lap, got to come all the way around. He's on the tail end of the lead lap. Hang in there, buddy. Wait stop by Jeff Agnew. Puts him in danger of going a lap down. Steven is with crew chief Doug Weddle. Doug, it must have been pretty bad for you to stop under those circumstances. What happened to Jeff's car? Yeah, we just got bunched up over coming off a of two and knocked the grill in. We had so much tape on it this place started to overheat, so we just stopped took some tape off of it. We're in good shape. We just don't want to take a chance of cooking the motor. Well, it was a great call. They had to. If he was already getting hot, they had to bring it in and take the tape off it. So the car really, you know, is going to lose a little bit of downforce in the front end by taking the tape off. Again, you got, you cannot afford to overheat. Back on board the naturally fresh camera watching Shelby Howard. Really uh, kind of smooth right now. Of course, tires are fresh later in the race. Get some rubber buildup on the racetrack and get into some competition. Quick glance to the uh, mirror there, Scott. But right now, things look like it's uh, well in order for Shelby Howard. That's a nice drive-in race car. When your hands just barely move, very steady on the wheel, you're going through the corners. Absolutely. Hard, hardly very little effort. He's just making laps. How about this? Number 20, and it's a Pontiac. What can you tell me a little bit more about this deal? Let's see. It's got Tony Stewart smoked barbecue sauce as a sponsorship on the side. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Yeah, okay. uh, yeah, that's exactly the case. Tony Stewart car owner on the 20 car for Shelby Howard. Big pack of cars right now, and we've got Danny Sammons trying to find his way around Greg Van Alt and the 94 of Chris Limerick. Looking here, Indiana driver. Looks like Sammons going to try the outside, but looking inside was Lonnie Rush for just a second. Danny Sammons looking for his first trip to Victory Lane. We've seen 39 drivers in the history of the Pro Cup Series go to Victory Lane in 199 races. Will we see a new face today? Yeah, very well, he could. Tim Bainey Jr. right behind him in the Grease Lightning car. I'll tell you, he's putting together a very good race. We've watched this young man kind of progress. Race after race after race, and he's becoming much more consistent, staying up towards his leaders. Bainey trying to put some pressure on Lonnie Rush Jr., father and son. We talk about, and caution oh. back out again. We've got caution once again. 
Spencer Jr. Heavy contact over here in turn one. Has made his way through turn two and down the back straightaway in the Focus Enterprise Pontiac trying to find a way to get that car to pit road. He will not finish the 200 race here in the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series, but it's all about the race fans, and fans are included in each and every event. We talked to the 2002 champion, Jason Sarvis, about the Pro Cup experience. We have a good fan base. It gets bigger and bigger because they include their fans at every race. You know, I think it, it, it these, these young kids that come here, they don't know that we're not Jeff Gordon. You know, to them, it's fun to be able to get closer to race cars, and I think that's the biggest thing that's made the series grow. Indianapolis Raceway Park getting set for a restart. Brian Ross has taken over the lead because the leader, Clay Rogers, is on pit road. And so is Joel Kaufman. He's down on pit road as well. Big change of events right here. Rogers on pit road way too early to pit. Well, obviously a problem on the 44 car. Probably lucky he came in now. There's Rogers. They put gas and a left rear, I mean left side tires on the terminal trucking Ford. See that Jeff Agnew also on pit road. Agnew had nothing to lose coming to pit road, but a big change for Clay Rogers. He's going to lose a lot of track positions. You know, we may be early enough in this race where you can get four tires, put fuel in it. We're good to go because tire wear is not an issue. It may be a strategy move. Have to see how it shakes out for Clay Rogers and the 44 team. Meanwhile, they have allowed Brian Ross to move to the front. And that right now is going to be a dangerous situation because this man could flat run around IRP. It's too early for fuel, I'm telling you. But I know that if they make it from here, they got too big a fuel cell, man. Clayton come in, so I don't know. Uh, he's short fitting, I guess. So I got a flat tire, looks like. Go front, Captain. Let her eat. I'm going back over to Joe. Good job, Brian. Well, Left they're talking tire. about they're talking about the fact that. They felt as though Clayton Rogers had a flat tire, had to come down pit road to fix it. But Jeff Agnew, Joel Kaufman, and these guys put fuel in it. They don't think they can go the whole distance on fuel. If you do, you got a big fuel cell. But you know what? A couple of cautions, you might be able to get it in there. Jeff Agnew, nothing to lose. Actually, he was in danger of going a lap down had this race gone much further. Leaders were starting to close in on the 73, so it was a lucky break for Agnew. A pair of Indiana boys up front, led by Brian Ross and Shelby Howard. His second start in the Pro Cup Series, lining up for the restart. Right behind them, you've got 66 of Benny Gordon, the eight of Johnny Rumley. And everybody up to the gearbox, back underway. And Marty Lindley, last year's winner, starting to make his presence known in the top five. And six was Mike Laughlin Jr., the guy that could do, really should have won the race here last year. Just kind of waiting for him to make his move to the front. Had, they, uh, had the car on cruise control past the halfway point, got caught up with some lap cars. Meanwhile, Brian Ross of the three previous Pro Cup races here at Indianapolis Raceway Park, Brian Ross has claimed one of them back in 2002, Marty Lindley and Sean Studer. The other two winners, no repeat winners here at IRP. And Brian Ross early on trying to make it happen. Then right behind him, Shelby Howard, who could be winner number 40. So the Indiana connection showing the way. Concern for the defending champion of the series, Clay Rogers. In fact, Jeff Merritt is with Stephen Cox right now. Well, that's a stop nobody expected and surely didn't want. What's up with that? Yeah, we didn't really want it either. I think uh, whenever the 36 got in the wall, uh, there was some debris on the track. Whenever it kind of left the tire now. Does this change your pit strategy at all now? Well, it kind of puts us behind the eight ball a little bit, not having four tires later in the race, but uh, we got a good enough car that when everybody pits, we'll come down, put on our two rights, and hopefully beat everybody out. Maybe we can hold them off. The issue would be he's got two right sides for later on. He had a flat tire. They had no choice. Had to come in and change left sides. Jeff Agnew, Joel Kaufman might be a little bit different strategy there, though. Looks like Kaufman trying to make his way through some of the pack, trying to follow Jeff Agnew through heavy traffic there out of turn four. A couple of cars wiggling in the middle of that. We see the Pure Vegetables 48 machine of Sam Falone. Falone out of North Carolina's New York. DJ Kennington just outside the top 10 in points. He's not planning on running the full schedule. He's got a full ride in the Cascar series back in Canada, but he's doing very well and showing very strong in his Pontiac. Tim Bainey Jr. with a mirror fall of DJ Kennington. Rolling right up to him behind him. They get off this corner, you're right up against the wall. Really a fun place to drive. 
forward look out of Bainey's machine rolling off into turn three. Bainey up a little bit higher. There's Kennington trying the low groove. And we still see the 75 of Corbett trying to run down low. Up front, Brian Ross starting to stretch out the distance between himself and Shelby Howard in that 20 car. You have got to be impressed with Shelby Howard, though. This is this is really tough for a young man. This is a big racetrack. It's all about a, a rhythm, a huge rhythm. Brian Ross, I think, really has a, an advantage when it comes to experience at this racetrack. But this young man has put together a whale of a race. Well, it's real no, really no surprise. You talk about some of the youngsters that have come up. Joel Kaufman, a former winner in, uh, and a champion here in Indiana racing in late models, has made his way in the Pro Cup Series, has gone to victory lane twice. Shelby Howard also very experienced in late models and a lot of other forms of racing as well. Even though he's only 19 years of age, he's got a lot of experience. He knows how to get around this racetrack, and he's got a lot of poise. He's, he's taking care of that race car here early on. Still a long way to go, only 44 laps in. We're not even to one quarter of the way in. Behind him, though, he's got Benny Gordon in the 66 car. They're trying to get themselves back on top and make another bid for for the championship. It looked like Benny Gordon kind of closed up just a little bit on that last turn three and four. This car looks like it's coming to him now. 45 laps into this run. Things are going to kind of balance out these cars. They're going to really know what they have at this point in the race. Top three cars breaking away. Rumley running in that fourth position all by himself. And here's the gaggle of cars led by Jason Mignon in the 07 car. That's the jugular energy drink car. Ross's teammate Joe Gata side by side with Travis Miller rather impressed with this young rookie as well still in high school the 98 car up on the high side the racetalklive.com entry trying to do battle with the U.S. insurance group speed coach truck loop forward to the inside that's a sister car to Brian Ross and they're trying to get run that low group A.J. Frank making his way to the front after starting dead last after changing the clutch but that crew's had a long weekend already. Lucky to get it in after changing clutch just for qualifying, just to get in the race. So Frank and his struggles uh, starting to rebound a bit. Working to the inside of Randy Humphrey. Great clips forward. Humphrey's team brought a second car here this weekend to try to make their way into the field. Gabby DiCarlo not making the starting field here this weekend. We'll see her back, the young lady from Phoenix, Arizona. Three wide almost out of turn Woo! four. Something you don't want to do here. You know, Randy Humphrey's kind of been struggling just a little bit in the Shooters Pro Cup Series. We moved over from the Dash Series. And you know what? This might be the type of racetrack that really fits him. A little bit more room to work. Longer straightaways. Kind of more of what he's used to. Let that old car just stretch out. How about Gary Sentamon in the Jags.com car? We haven't seen him. A lot of experience here running the ASA cars. I thought he'd be a front runner here today. Well, it didn't qualify quite what he wanted out of the Jags.com Chevrolet. And right behind him is that new Ford for Jeff Agnew. Looks like those drivers about to hook up, try to work their way closer to the front here this afternoon. Still a long way to go. We'll be one quarter of the way through next time by for your leader. Meanwhile, St. Amant trying to get by Mignon down in turn three. Here is Joel Kaufman, the winner two weeks ago at Lonesome Pine deep in the field. He's alongside Marhefka in that 12 car. The ABC truck body Pontiac of Kaufman. Single race sponsorship for Joel Kaufman this weekend. Trying to do battle there and also Mark Nesbitt in the 88 car. Rather uncharacteristic Nesbitt in the 88 struggling here this afternoon. Right behind him is Glenn Gall, the American title and trust car. Behind him is Leslie Law in the Porta Cool Master Corp image. Alpharetta, Georgia. Long ride from him. Maybe you can turn this thing around and have a good run. Oh, a little contact on the front straightaway. Tight quarter racing and all, you know, Scott, we've come off of two tight bull rings to this Indianapolis Raceway Park. This is like racing in a 40-acre field by comparison, but still these guys get together a bit trying to find that optimum groove, which is on the outside. And Joe Coppin knows that he doesn't need to live down here. He, he had such a good run going into turn one and just could not stay down there. His car is just a little bit too tight on the bottom. You can't pick the gas up like you want. You're probably going to have to give the groove up, get back up, cool his tires, and make another run at it. Ooh. The LaGrange Indiana native has to move Marhefka up the racetrack just a little bit. Marhefka in that Clark's Chevrolet. Up to the outside. Kaufman trying to work to the inside groove. He better, he better go ahead and get on by, or otherwise that door's going to close up. Martin Nesbitt's filling that hole. Joel Kaufman, this whole line will go around the outside if he doesn't get back up and cover that spot. He's got some traffic directly ahead down to the inside. And that would be Joe Harrison Jr. in the 57 car. Harrison Automotive Chevrolet, one of the longtime competitors here in Pro Cup action. 
Joe Harrison Jr. behind. Oh, 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 oh. Just a little bit of contact. Joel Kaufman says, hey, I've got to go. I've got to go. They're getting away from me. He should be able to complete the pass. Chrome horn action out of turn four for Joel Kaufman. And looks like Mignon off the pace. The 07 slowing out of turn two. So Jason Mignon headed to pit road. Indianapolis Raceway Park, Hooters Pro Cup Series action. We're coming back to you with a lot more. Back at Indianapolis Raceway Park, riding along with Shelby Howard and the 20 car. 61 circuits complete here in the Lucas Oil 200. See Shelby Howard trying to work to the inside of him is the 66 of Benny Gordon. Battle for second position as old. Almost a little bit of contact. He just had to let him go. Oh, Glenn Galt on the outside. Going to have to take away position there. But Benny Gordon had a great run there. Coming up on all this lap traffic. They're going to really get fixed. Shelby Howard thought about trying to force the issue down in turn three. He thinks better of it. He'll drop down to the inside. Move alongside Glenn Galt, the American title and trust company Chevrolet. So a change for second. Vinnie Gordon takes over second. Howard back to third. Meanwhile, Brian Ross trying to take off and race to the sunset here. 64 laps in. Ross in a commanding position. The battle for second really hasn't materialized once Gordon able to get by. He's using that lap traffic, keeping Shelby Howard at bay. Yeah, you got Shelby Howard up behind that lap car. Just really made a good move and uh, came out as the leader. And you see Brian Ross trying to make a move on Martin Nesbitt. Trying to put a lap down. Martin Nesbitt, the 88 car. That's not quite uh, where he wants to be here this weekend. Car just off. Just a tick, and it doesn't take much. You talked about it earlier. Starting lineup. Fast 32 cars within eight tenths of a second here on this big 5 8 mile. On board with Johnny Rumley as Rumley now starts to work on traffic behind Marhefka and the Clark Chevrolet. Marhefka dropping to the inside, chops off the line for Rumley. He'll go up to the high side. And this is where you want to be, right, Scott? Yeah, I think you want to be just maybe a half a groove up. I think he has a little bit more room up there. If you watch Brian Ross, he lets his car go all the way up to the top, makes a really good run off the corner. He's in the gas wide open right before the middle. Here is Shelby Howard moving in on another Howard, Woody Howard in the 55 car. And it's apparent the damage from that crash late in practice yesterday afternoon has got Woody Howard a little bit behind the eight ball here. The Dean Motorsports Joe Gibbs Racing Oil Chevrolet. Yeah, Woody Howard had such a great run over there in South Boston. Really thought he could come in Excellent here and do, 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 yeah, do a great job. Johnny Rummy has run down the 20 car, put on a little bit of pressure. Shelby Howard still shy of the halfway point. Still uh, a little bit early to come to pit road, at least for those tires. Uh, Pro Cup Series racing teams a lot at eight tires, and they have to come to pit road and change a minimum of two per the rule book. Perhaps this is just cooling his heels a little bit. Wait for that pit stop, try to get your track position, and then make a run for the checkers here in the Lucas Oil 200. Well, I think he's given the fact that he cannot run with Brian Ross. He's just going to relax, let his car do what it wants to, make a change at halfway, and get back at it. 69 laps completed in Indianapolis. We're coming right back. The Lucas Oil 200 presented by Hair Auto Group. Indianapolis Raceway Park. Gene Crane along with Scott Sutherland and Stephen Cox bringing you Hooters Pro Cup action here on this Sunday afternoon. And we take a look. Well, we were oh. taking a look. We got a hard crash in turn one. Hard hit. That is the 98 of Travis Miller. Young high school student, 17 years of age, at his racetalklive.com Ford. Really hammered the outside wall here in turn one. Left front down on that race car. That might be indicative of what the problems were for Travis Miller. Yeah, Travis Miller in a racetalklive.com car. Must have problems with the left front. That drops the car down, no steering control. Smacks that outside wall, really cruising. And he qualified 13th. That's the worst thing. Mm, well, good thing is that Miller's car, uh, although used up, did its job and cleaned things up. Travis checked out and gets set to resume racing. Meanwhile, Brian Ross had really checked out on the field. He was just checked out and gone. 
Yeah, but there's going to be a lot of there's a lot of strategies going right on. You can bet there's a lot of chatter on the radio. They're trying to figure out should we come in and get our tires, get our fuel. We want to do it now. Track position is going to be so important late in the race. You cannot afford to go ahead and give up that track position and try to gain it back for later. Let's also note that Joe Gata and Brian Ross are team cars. They're pitting in the same box and they're both on the lead lap. So somebody needs to come in first and somebody come in second. We saw Shelby Howard peel off. He's coming to pit road. A lot of your front runners coming to pit road, including Johnny Rumley. So Rumley, bring that Boyd Salt Racing number eight down pit road. Mike Laughlin Jr., Joe Gata's on pit road. That might be why Brian Ross has to stay out. Joe Gata, who's running for the points, is going to come down. He gets to use the crew first. So Gata headed to his pit area, as is Shelby Howard. We saw this car, we thought, drop off just a little bit. So this may be an opportune time for Howard as Johnny Rumley is getting service on his number eight. Steven is with Joe Gata's crew. Joe Gata will come down pit row. He is working hard to try to make himself a contender, working his way forward in this race. They will take on right side tires, and guys, this is a critical stop this time around for this team because Odell Motorsports has to get Joe in and out so that next time around, this very same crew can work on the lead car of Brian Ross, who is your pole sitter and leader right now. That's what's going down on pit row right now. Joe Gaeta waiting for just a touch slower stop than they would like now. They're just now on the left side tires, so this has really held this team up. Remember, they wanted to get Brian Ross in the 46 car under this same yellow in and out. And guys, I don't know if it's going to happen. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. They're going to have to wait another lap. You know, I've shared teams before. I've been in those positions. And what we would do is the guy running the farthest up front would be able to come in first. That buys a lot more time for the crew to be able to get ready for the next guy to come in. They have really cut themselves short here. A lot of work on pit road. Travis Miller's car has been brought in from turns one and two where it came to rest after starting 13th here this afternoon. Well, drivers are like everyone else, creatures of habit. Some of the habits a little bit stranger than others. Sometimes though, they're just plain old weird. Superstition, that's what I was looking for, exactly. Generally, a, a guy doesn't like to have somebody eating peanuts around his race team. That's a superstition. The color green, the number 13, you know, those are all superstitions that, that a race car driver would have. I never had any superstitions. I eat peanuts, I wear green. You know, 13 doesn't mean anything to me. But over the winter, I was thinking about something that I, there is a superstition that I do have. And every morning that I get up, I always put my best sock on my right foot. I'm not a real com big computer guy. My favorite website is definitely jigs.com. Uh, you know, I, I get on there, buy, buy all my high-performance parts. Probably my wife's least favorite website is, is jigs.com because there's an awful lot of money spent at jigs. Well, I was never the superstitious type, but I know a lot of these drivers are. But the front runner guys have just hit pit road. Marty Lindley with only two tires. Shelby Howard with four. Clay Rogers only got two because he had to. He used his left side earlier. Johnny Rumley with four. I don't know. It's gonna, we're going to watch see how this unfolds. See how it unfolds. A look at how the rookies are running here in the Miller Lite Rundown as we head to break from here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Under caution at Indianapolis Raceway Park, and Vinny Gordon stayed out on the racetrack. Strategic moves by that team from Dubois, Pennsylvania. Steven is with Todd Gordon. Todd, why didn't you guys come in this time around? I'm asking myself that now, but we took a little gamble here. The tires are falling off pretty bad. Um, we're not, we're going to have to have some luck, but at the end, we're going to have a lot better rubber, and I think that I think we can salvage a good finish and, and possibly come back to win the race if everything plays our way. Um, it, it, right now, it doesn't look like a good call. Any concern about going a lap down? Yeah, absolutely. Well, the tires are falling off about a second. But like I said, if it falls our way, it's a 50-50 chance. We, um, we decided to stay out and have better rubber at the end, but, you know, we'll see. We gamble. Well, he and Brian Ross both in that predicament. Well, we're a little bit over 80 laps into the race. I wonder how far he thinks he can go as far as fuel. Not, not to get caught in that window where you might run out of gas. You want to wait as long as you can now to get your fresh rubber, but don't wait too long to run out of gas. Have to depend on how the cautions fall. 
to work your way. Uh, definitely not strategy, more luck being uh, touted by Todd Gordon down on pit road. Brian Ross ready to bring the field back to green here in the Lucas Oil 200. Lap cars down to the inside, led by Greg Vidalst and that 35 car. Green is in the air once again. Pretty much a drag race back to turn one. Several cars going to pit road. Those cars that took two tires include Marty Lindley, who lines up third and right behind him, Martin Esbitt. That team has had a turnaround from the earlier part of the race. And, and we're going to find out just how good maybe even just two tires can be. Todd Gordon talked about what, how far these cars were falling off. Brian Ross chose not to come in and get tires. Benny Gordon didn't get tires. Marty Lindley's going to make his run if the tires are an issue. Lindley with only two tires on that stop. And Ross starting to pull away from the field once again. Now, Brian Ross has not been to pit road. He's not put fresh BF Goodrich G-Force radials on that race car. But he's still got a very stout race car. This is going to be a car that somebody's going to really have to watch. And whoever is able to get up there and best Brian Ross is going to have a tough time. But it's really easy when you're out front and leading. Not, not, not really easy, but it's, it's a lot easier when you're leading. You've got fresh air, uh, clean air. Everything's downforce on your car. When he has Whoa, oh, we got trouble. a spin. That was right around. In fact, that was Vince Finello of the 14 going Oh, we're around. still green. We're still green. Caution wow. does not come out. That's really going to shuffle up some of the folks that were deeper in the field. Don't know who else got involved with that. Laughlin was right close to Bainey, but that was a little bit further beyond Laughlin. But you talk about Brian Ross. He's out in clean air right now. The car's working excellent. Plenty of downforce. If he comes in and gets tires, he's going to get tires later. That's going to have to work his way back up through traffic. It's going to be a different picture there. Well, don't forget, Brian Ross was also involved in that first spin when he and Vinals got together. Possibly some damage to the right front, uh, the headlight door area of that nose piece, but it doesn't seem to have affected the car at all. Clayton Rogers trying to make a move under Martin Espin. And Clay Rogers came to pit road. That left front tire went down. He's marched his way back through the field. He's challenging Nesbitt. This is a race right now for the fourth position. A.J. Frank from the tail of the pack has made his way all the way back to the front. Team car, A.J. Frank. Trying to make that move on the bottom. It's really tough to make it stick. When you make that run right in the middle of the corner and get a good run off, hard to stick on the bottom of the racetrack. A.J. Frank, that American Iron Horse entry, that Ford, Following in the tire tracks of his teammate and the defending champion of the Pro Cup Series. Now he's got a challenge to the inside. Shelby Howard and a wiggle by A.J. Frank. Gets it up in the marbles. Stays off the concrete. Great job of driving by A.J. Frank. Ooh, got up there, right up next to that little rubber cushion up there. And I think he got his right sides in it just a little bit. And man, that takes away the grip for those right side tires almost into the wall. You know, that's a good point, Scott. With the groove being way up to the high side of the wall, there's not a lot of room for the rubber that r comes off these tires to collect on the high side. That could have been catastrophic. Yeah, really tough situation to be in there once you get into, those, into that rubber. So A.J. Frank struggles just a bit. Still there. Still there. Keep digging, man. Keep digging. Barely there. Barely there. Keep digging. Keep digging. Keep digging. That's your door. Barely there. You'll get him this corner. Come on. Keep digging. Barely there. Still there. Barely there. Keep digging, baby. Keep digging. This spotter was letting him know where Clayton Rogers was, so you don't try to come up too soon. He wasn't all the way clear. Now it's going to be really a tough, hard to make a living on the bottom side of the racetrack. It's hard to see from the right side. Your peripheral vision somewhat obscured by the safety equipment, the way the seats are built. So that spotter becomes a very valuable commodity, uh, not only here in the Pro Cup Series, but in a lot of the other racing series as well. Looks like Agnew able to work his way around the Titan Industrial Ford of Mike Laughlin Jr. So Jeff Agnew, several trips to Pitt Road. He apparently have made the right adjustments. He's on his way. Shelby Howard now will clear the 44. Clay Rogers takes over that spot. And A.J. Frank now gets it gathered back up. He's going to bypass his teammate as well. So A.J. Frank steps up yet another spot. In fact, A.J. Frank started all the way on the tail, something he's not unfamiliar with. I mean, this is a lot wider track, a lot bigger, um, a lot more places to go if something happens in front of you. Um, although, you know, IRP is a very fast racetrack, and you run so close to the wall here that, you know, even though it's wide, it still it seems like a pretty tough place to pass. So I think we'll still have our work cut out for us here. With their work cut out for them, Mike Laughlin Jr. tried to hold off the charge from Johnny Rumley. 
Brumley's had a stout run here before. He ran very strong last year here at IRP. Looks like that car coming back through the field. He has a very good race car right now. The surprise for me is Mike Lawton Jr., as good as he was here last year, really dominated this race in the early going. I thought he could make his charge to the front. You know what? Just things, little things change from year to year or even from race to race at the same racetrack. And it's just those little things that you can't find or, or, or produce again. This team has definitely had to chase the issues for the opening two rounds of this Northern Division of the Pro Cup Series. Meanwhile, Martin Nesbitt trying to hold off Shelby Howard. Nesbitt is fourth, Howard is fifth. And running just outside the top five, sixth position is A.J. Frank. Shelby Howard now going to try the inside groove out of turn four. All these veterans out here in this field here today, and we're talking about Shelby Howard and A.J. Frank, probably a couple of names you're going to hear a lot in the coming future. Two good race car drivers. And candidates for that Miller Lite Rookie of the Race as well as the Rookie of the Year Award. Coming up on halfway, here's Brian Ross, a cross-start finish. He completes lap 100. Brian Ross, your Lucas Oil halfway leader. He's led 65 laps so far. That's really no surprise. Brian Ross ready to take home $1,000. He's already pocketed $1,000 from Advanced Auto Parts by being the pole sitter. Yeah, but without getting new tires, this is kind of a surprise to me. I didn't think he could run off and hide again like he's done now. Sign up for the Team Suter Challenge. You can win $500. And Brian Ross looking to win $500 for himself and Chuck Minnick. Indianapolis Raceway Park, the Lucas Oil 200. Riding along in the Grease Lightning Ford of Tim Bainey Jr. just past halfway. Brian Ross trying to take home the lion's share of the purse here this afternoon. We get the battle right now. This is a charge by Jeff Agnew. 73 cars really come to life. Those two cars side by side down to turn three. Agnew all the way down on the apron, Scott. That's, that's really characteristic of Jeff Agnew. We're under caution. Caution has been displayed. JJ Pack, hard impact. The inside wall here on the front straightaway. USAR official over to check out, make sure JJ is all right. He moves around inside the Duracross 06 machine, but it's going to be a rough ending for the race today. And his Pontiac comes to rest to the inside retaining wall. It's got a lot of uh, a lot of debris off that inside wall. We'll have to clean it up and get JJ Pack's car on the hook and headed back to the inside. In fact, let's take another look at it. Off of turn four, looks like it just crossed up. From Tim Bainey's perspective, indeed, just lost traction. Yeah, it came up off that corner and you're still wide open throttle and you're right up there next to the wall and you just want to turn the wheel just a touch more and that's when the right rear will break loose and at these speeds, it is really tough. Brian Ross giving up the lead. Headed down pit road. So the leader to pit road along with Benny Gordon, the Northern Division champion for 2004. Ross on his way, Steven is waiting for him. A 46 car, your pole sitter, Brian Ross, will come down pit road. This is the stop, guys, that they wanted to make a long time ago. The car is just a little bit tight, but of course they couldn't bring it in and correct this a few minutes ago under our last yellow because Joe Gatiss uh, to turn in and out of the pits took them so very, very long. So Brian Ross will take on fresh tires all the way around this race car, and they're going to make some minor adjustments to try to loosen the car up. They're tight in the center of the corner, and that's a very tough place to be tight here at this particular racetrack because you have to drive very, very high in the groove. So that doesn't give you a lot of space to coast through with the wheel locked as far as it can go to the left. So Brian is in and out. He's got fresh rubber. Scott, is that going to help him at the very end of the show? Well, I think the fresher rubber may be an advantage, but here's his problem. He's got a lot of good race cars that he's got to pass. If the car's a little bit tight, it's hard to turn the car down, as Steven alluded to, to get that run underneath him with a really tight race car. When he was out there by himself, he could use the whole racetrack. Really going to be fun to watch him coming through the field, Gene. Going to have to use up that rubber. J.J. Pack's car going up on the hook and headed back to the garage area out for the day. Hey, folks, want to get a discount on tickets and souvenirs? We'll go to USARfans.com and sign up for the Hooters Pro Cup Fan Club. Discounts on tickets, souvenirs, and a whole lot more.
Very impressed with Scott Wimmer tonight. He kind of came out of nowhere. I just... Scott Wimmer utilized the Pro Cup Series to launch his next Zell Cup career. Ryan Vickers will score his first victory of 2001 in the USAR Hooters Pro Cup North Tour. First of four and the 2000 Miller Lite Rookie of the Year. One of the young guns and the defending champion of this Pro Cup Series in trouble. 44 car, a hard left-hand turn behind the wall. Stephen Cox on his way over to talk to Clay Rogers. Clay, you came down pit row, and I listened to the engine when you stomped the accelerator, and man, it sounded terrible. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what's going on. It sounds like something electrical, maybe. Tack was bouncing around. Uh, it just started almost like it was hitting a chip or something at the end of the straightaway, and the tack needle would go crazy. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to be kind of upset if we, if we have a, a battery problem again in the second week in a row because we spent good money on some good alternator stuff, and... Uh, just, uh, it's frustrating, you know, I don't mind stuff happening every now and then, but when you can't put your finger on what's going on, or uh, just uh, frustrating. We had a good race car. Uh, our teammates out there running good, and that's the main thing. He's running for points, so uh, I believe we could have given them a run for their money, but we'll just have to uh, wait till Lakeland to go again. But really, this is a great opportunity time. He talked about a battery problem, which they had at the last race. If they haven't fixed that problem, if it's something inside that race car, this is one more shot of getting it fixed before they go to Lakeland. Not a points race for him. Have it fixed before they go to Lakeland. Yeah, this is a race of, of desire for Clay Rogers. He's run well here at IRP in Bush Grand National Competition. He was as high as fourth. Uh, one particular race before a late pit stop put him deep in the field and got involved in a wreck. He wanted to come here and have some good fun and check out the race car. They've checked it out. They're going to have to do a little work before we head to Lakeland. Shelby Howard dives to the inside on the break, makes a bid at Marty Lindley over in turn two. Wow, I thought he had him clear. Great run by Shelby Howard. Four tires versus two tires. Marty Lindley only took on two, but he's got the desired line on the outside. It seems to me, Scott, when a car jumps down to the inside, particularly out of turn two, that if you don't have a strong enough run and almost rub up against the guy up on the outside, get him crossed up a little bit, you can't complete the pass. It just binds the car up enough. See, right here, car seems to bog down, and the man on the outside line able to step up and once again challenge. Well, what happens is you're on that bottom groove, and you're trying to get the gas pedal all the way to the floor. Either the nose is going to take off and start pushing, you run into him, creates a problem, or the back end kicks around, you hit him, it creates another problem. You're really bound up, as you say, on that bottom groove. The guy on the outside has a huge advantage. Jeff Agnew making a run at the 45 car. 73 car trying to rebound after disappointment at Lonesome Pine. Finished 29th there. Came in after a second place run of the season opener for the Northern Division. Agnew trying to make amends for it and shake down this brand new race car. Well, when you say brand new race car, this is a Ford. It's going to be one of the hardest things for me to say. Jeff Agnew, it is Ford. Has been a bit unusual to try to remember that. We look at uh, this battle back to turn three. Let's head back to the pits. Joey Bishop, the spokesperson for the 16 car. Joey, you've got older tires and you know the 46 car is coming. Can Marty hang on? What's he saying about the car? We was a little bit tight. And we decided to get two rights for track position and uh, that freed us up and we're pretty good now. So the sun's come out, so the 46 is in a class kind of by itself, but we're kind of hoping he can keep the cars between us and we'll be all right. It may be too little too late. That's right. That's what we're going to try to do. Marty Lindley out front. Good comment there about the sun coming out. Changes the racetrack quite a bit. Yeah, it's going to free the race cars up just a little bit. So if you're a little bit tight, it might help you. If you're loose, it's really going to hurt. Uh, it might. I don't know whose plans it's going to play into, but we always see Jeff Agnew, his car sideways at most of these racetracks. This might be what he's been looking for. Agnew's got a stout race car, able to get by Shelby Howard. Doesn't appear that the changes they made on that pit stop have really benefited the 20 car. He was stout in the very first portion of the race, towards the middle portion, coming towards pit stop time. Car seemed to fall off a little bit. Now it seems to be just kind of kind of stagnant right there. Well, they're just kind of relaxing, I think, right now. You've got to be very careful not to burn up tires, as what they had talked about a little bit earlier. You've got to be careful not to burn your own tires up, save something for the end. Johnny Rumley with a great run. How about Danny Sammons? They haven't said a lot about him today, but he's got a great run going. Certainly does, Scott. Danny Sammons has finished second on several occasions, but that first ever win has eluded the 97 team. Boy, would that ever be a celebration here this 200th race if Sammons could pick up his very first win. 
Well, if he can ever get to victory lane, it's going to be a party anyway. I'm telling you, <laughs> that young man, they want desire is what it's all about. And that team is really buckled down and really getting after it. Well, then determination. They haven't given up. We ride along with Johnny Rumley. Lucas Oil Chevrolet riding behind Martin Nesbitt in the 88. Here's a battle down the back straightaway. We see Jeff Agnew sizing up A.J. Frank. Frank to the outside, and Agnew continues to use that apron here. As, as many times I've watched him race here at this racetrack, that's the way I've seen him. If you're on the bottom groove, they'll start out high and go all the way down to the apron and really catch the left side tires. Jeff Agnew has found that line where he can drop all the way to the apron and make that pass. Little wiggle for Agnew that time out of turn two. Indicative of heating up that right rear? Well, we see Jeff Agnew sideways a lot of times, but nobody worries about it. That's just Jeff Agnew. <laughs> he does get every bit of, of ounce of, of power he can and, and handle out of a race car he can handle. Uh, the other part of it, he uses every inch of the racetrack. He tries to find every line possible to make his car go better or go faster or progress towards the front. He's doing that. You're looking at Benny Gordon and Brian Ross trying to make their way back up through after that tough pit stop. Trying to get by Joe Kata. Here's Joel Kaufman. Haven't heard a lot from the Pontiac here today. Uh, trying to get by Clay Rogers, who's back on the racetrack. So apparently it is some type of electrical problem. They continue to chase with the 44. 44 South, that is. 44 in and the 44 S running side by side. That indicates which division. A driver is racing for points here in the Pro Cup Series. Of course, that all builds up to that five race championship series to decide what's more than a million dollars in championship point fund money. Pretty good race back to turn one. Has been up on the outside, down inside is the 97 of Sammons. Danny Sammons holding tough to the inside, gets the car hooked up and holds his own off a of turn two. Let's give a call to Glenn Gold, although he's a lap down running with the leaders. He's got Gary St. Amant, the Jegs.com Chevrolet alongside. Glenn Gaunt keeps that 32 car down to the inside as Clay Rogers and Joel Kaufman will swing wide and try to bypass him. Clay Rogers in the middle of that thing, but he's laps down, so he just caught up. He's out here just to get some experience and have a good run. Eric Corbett out there still making laps. He, he, most of these guys are single file. The fastest guy on the racetrack right now, I think, is a 73 car. Jeff Agnew in his new Ford. Trying to run down Marty Lindley, who would like to put race number 200 as a win for that Hooters Air Ford. Lindley would also be the first back-to-back -back winner here at IRP. You're watching the Lucas Oil 200. Don't go away. The battle for the lead heats up here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Jeff Agnew has run down the leader, Marty Lindley. Lindley to the high side, and Agnew once again all the way down. Almost had all four tires below the yellow line. Agnew just can't get it done on that lap. Lindley leads at lap 132. He really doesn't try the bottom down here in turn one and two near as much as he did that time. Most of the time he's been just staying up in the race line in one and two. But we go into turn three, starts out high, and he can drop that thing all the way to the apron. That's how he's been getting it done. Early leader Brian Ross now trying to work his way around Martin Nesbitt in the 88. Here is that battle for the lead once again. They've got traffic directly ahead. Jeremy Miller, the 18 car, drops down to the low side. Lindley once again reasserts the 16 back to the lead. Jeff Agnew giving chase, trying to put it in the books here this afternoon. It would be a different winner at IRP, and Steven is with the crew chief, Doug Weddle. Doug, this thing's turned into a free-for-all. The 20 car is still strong. You guys are trying to get around the 16, and the 46 car is coming. So what do you make of it now? Well, you know, I mean, we're we're committed. We, we had to short pit or pit early because to get the tape off the grill. So we're, we're locked in, and there's nothing we can do different. With so many cars on the lead lap, I'm not sure Benny and those guys can get back to the front. So we're just going to have to run it out and see what happens. I think we're in pretty good shape. I think, I think the biggest thing that can happen right now is if it stays green for a long period of time. If it stays green a long time, that means the tire wear issue is going to go away. If, if a caution comes out and Brian Ross can catch up right behind these guys, then it's going to be a different story. Closes in the distance. Marty Lindley last time out of turn four had a little bit of a wiggle, and Jeff Agnew just couldn't quite capitalize. Here's Joe Gata trying to get by Lonnie Rush Jr. You know, it's a family sport. Lonnie Rush following in the footsteps of his father racing in the Pro Cup Series, but we've actually had father and son on the racetrack, and that would have been the Bigelows. Allen and Tom back in Winchester, and I heard a little rumor that we might see them in Salem. 
Well, that'll be fun. Here we go for the lead. Jeff Agnew all the way alongside and got loose. Just couldn't quite get it done, just like you said. You don't want to get up into that guy up the outside because that's going to create problems for both of you. And Shelby Howard back there might be uh, looking for uh, some little bit of a break like that. The 20 car, we talked about it earlier, maybe just biding their time. Man, he gets a great run off the corner at the time, gets his nose on it. I think right now he's just pestering Marty Lindley, just making him nervous, trying to use his tires up just a little bit. He can just hang around. He knows that he only got right side tires. Oh, he's giving it. Go to the bottom, go Trying to the bottom. To force a mistake, Lindley covers to the inside, has to swing back wide to get up in the groove, winds up the ponies in that 16 car, juices it up, and once again, back into the lead. A pretty good battle up front. Agnew this time doesn't rough him up. Meanwhile, Brian Ross trying to hustle his way there, and Stephen Cox is caught up with his car owner, Darren Odell. Darren, the 16 car took on a couple of tires. They have fresh right side rubber. You've got all four. The sun's come out. How have things changed since last time we talked? And do you have time to run them down? Well, I think I was leading last time we talked, and I'm somewhere back there. Uh, who knows where? You know, you know the old antics that the fastest car don't always win might be where I'm at today, because we definitely got the fastest race car. Uh, we got more tires. Tires really aren't an issue here. Uh, just a situation that, you know, pit strategy and all with two cars here. I think we kind of messed Brian up a little bit. Made a call. I don't know if we can get back through the traffic or not, but you know, we just see what he got. I want to give a heads up to Make a Wish Foundation. They brought little Sam Borden here today, and we're just excited to have him and Daddy could be with us. Hey, we can put that thing in Victor Lane for him and the sponsors. Well, it would be a Team Hooters Challenge win or a bonus there as well. It would be a Tucson win from the Pole Award. And Scott, my attention diverted to this battle up front. Lindley and Agnew going at it. And because of that, looks like A.J. Frank is also closing in. It's definitely the fact that Jeff Agnew is faster. He's got to find a way around Marty Lindley Field to set sail again. A.J. Frank closing the distance as long as Brian Ross is closing the distance as well. He's got to get around him. These three guys right here are going to be tough for Brian Ross to run down and pass. Leaders have run up on the 68 of Leslie Law. Law's going to drop down to the inside. That closes the door for Jeff Agnew. Has to follow in Marty Lindley's tire track. That doesn't last for long. Agnew pinches the car down once again and makes a run at Lindley. Can't make it happen. And about to be lapped just ahead of your leaders is Joel Kaufman. Kaufman in the 44. And oh, oh. Benny Gordon in trouble. 66 car going to the high side. Well, when you get a flat tire and you can't turn down, he's staying up against the wall. The caution's not out yet. Stay on it. Stay on it. 71 oh. car around. Lonnie oh, Rush at the inside wall. Oh, man. Jeff Agnew backed off a little bit. Rush gets the car righted and back underway. And he had a good run going, too. That's a tough break for Lonnie Rush. Got to wonder if he had radio communication that a caution may be coming out. Lifted just a bit and around he went. Well, everybody's backing down. You know, they know it's coming because they see the slower car. There was no way Benny Gordon could make it all the way around up against the wall and cut across traffic. Right front tire down on the Predator Performance Ford. Benny Gordon will need to come to pit road and get a BF Goodrich G-Force radio bolted onto the right front corner and likely uh, will do the right rear while they're there. But Lonnie Rush, got to wonder if he has possibly damaged the rear end or possibly the front suspension with that contact he had with the inside retaining wall. Well, that sure closes the gap up with Brian Ross being able to catch these guys, and it's going to really make it an interesting race. Will them better tires make it more of the outcome? Will he be able to take advantage of that? Well, Benny Gordon making uh, his way down towards the crew. Safety crews out to pick up any debris that might be out there. In fact, Stephen Cox is in the Gordon pit. The Predator Performance Ford is coming down pit row. Benny Gordon had a fantastic run going until they lost their pit strategy early on. Now things have gone from bad to worse. They have more difficulties with a flat right front tire. It's only a quick stop. They'll move him right back out. But there will also be a penalty tag on top of this. Now, look at the official in front of the race car right now. That is the difficulty. He did stop on the racetrack, and that is the reason for this penalty. So they got the tire changed quickly enough, but the problem is the penalty. They're going to use this time right now to go ahead and look under the race car as well and see if there's any adjustments they can make for just a bit more speed. But in the meantime, Benny Gordon will be held here on pit row, guys. If you intentionally stop on the racetrack to bring out the caution, there is a penalty involved, and that's what he got hit with. 
Well, the race has been heating up and the weather's heating up. That's going to bring out the swimsuits and the Hooters International swimsuit pageant. You can watch it exclusively at Hooters June 28th at 7 p.m. But if you're in Miami, you can watch it live or anywhere in the world. You can watch it from Hooters. Yes, indeed. Scott, you got to judge it this year? Absolutely. All right. We'll see you there. Shaping up for a restart here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. 200th event for the United Speed Alliance Racing Hooters Pro Cup Series. Marty Lindley has been able to hold off a challenge from a hard-charging Jeff Agnew. We'll go at least another lap behind the pace car. And with that being said, a lot of companies support racing at all levels. And a lot of folks finding this is a great place to advertise their products, goods, and services. Dave Cox from Hair Auto, the presenting sponsor of today's race, spoke with us earlier about their involvement. It's a, it's a real grassroots racing series, we feel like. And it's an opportunity for us to display our products and, and for the people who are involved to use our products. So it, it's, a, it's a great business opportunity for us. And that's the reason we're involved with it. Well, that's a great deal. Dave, I want to tell you personally, I bought a truck from you two years ago from the Hair Auto Group. Absolutely love my Chevrolet Silver Rock. In fact, I think you were saying that your uh, your salesman was our honorary starter. That's for a fact. Rico, great job. The great people up there. Field back underway, and again, Lindley trying to jump out front. He's got Agnew in tow. They head down the back straightaway, and Jeff Agnew really sizing up the 16 car again. Drives it down low in three and four. Can he make it work this time? Tires have had a chance to cool down both cars, bobbling just a little bit. If I'm Jeff Agnew and I'm sitting in second, I've hounded him to death. I've hounded Marty Lindley. The thing I want to do right now, take that air off that spoiler. Take that air off that spoiler. He knows he only got two rights. If he burns that left rear tire up, he's going to drive right by him like nothing. Well, Agnew again dives to the inside, and he's going to pull alongside Marty Lindley. Side-by-side -side battle, let's A.J. Frank close in. Three-car breakaway, Rumley running in that fourth position, and just behind Rumley, whoa, maybe a little contact down there in turn one. Oh, there was. Marty Lindley got sideways. I couldn't tell if they had a little bit of, it may have been, just touched just a little bit. Great run by A.J. Frank. Took advantage of that situation. Marty Lindley's car skittering up the bank. He caught it before getting into the outside concrete. While all this is going on, Johnny Rumley at fourth. He's got, although many laps down after a long trip to Pitt Road, uh, Clay Rogers is right there. Oh, and a little bit of roughness off a of turn two. A.J. Frank and Lindley get together. A little contact. They straighten it back out, still side by side. And this is allowing Jeff Agnew to run away. Agnew has opened up, what, six, seven, eight car lengths? Ooh, A.J. Frank, just a little bit loose. He's going to have to give up, give it up. He's going to have to get back in line and cool the tires back down. What really surprises me is that the 73 car has used that bottom groove coming off turn four. He's not moving up in that high groove, but I really expected him to. Jeff Agnew comfortable, at least, for the time being. And problems in one and two, and, and it's going to involve the 14 of Finello and the 12 of Robbie Marhefka. Vince Finello trying to get that car re-fired. Actually, it's fired up, trying to get it out of the grassy area there. Some rain yesterday has got it a little bit slick down there. But there's no caution. They're still standing on it. Finello out of the way and making forward progress. So Green stays on the racetrack. A.J. Frank and Marty Lindley continue their battle, still side by side and still touching from time to time. Wow, you couldn't have put a piece of paper in between them two that time. Watch him down into turn one and two. And Still A.J. Frank able to cut that car down low. Both cars bobble off the corner. Still a dead heat down to turn three. Oh, oh, oh. When we on the outside. Oh, just barely this got there. <laughs> wow, that's almost a point where eight tires hold better than four. They were so close together. What a run by A.J. Frank. Change for second position while all that went on, though. Jeff Agnew checked out on the field. Agnew's got 10, 12 car lengths on the second place battle. Rumley is in that fourth position, and he had the lap car of Clay Rogers between himself and now Gary St. Amant. And Gary St. Amant has come out of nowhere, but give it up for oh. Marty Lindley. Rosh is on the speedway. Robbie Marhefka involved in the spin just a couple of laps ago. The motor has gone away in the 12 car. So Pease Motorsports.
the Clarks sponsored Chevrolet of Marhefka to pit road. Robbie Marhefka looking forward to Jennerstown, his home track, the next event on the Northern schedule for the Pro Cup Series. So Marhefka on pit road, and Jeff Agnes sees the advantage he had built up go away. We'll be back to Indianapolis Raceway Park with more action. Lucas Oil 200 presented by Hair Auto Group. USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series has been a launch pad for many drivers. Pro Cup's been awful good to me. Hooters has been, Hooters Air has been a sponsor of mine now for a couple of years and we had Hooters restaurants, so it's just been a great series, a uh, big part of my life. The thing that I'm amazed about is how we keep growing year after year. I just, you know, as of like last year, I didn't know how we could grow, you know, in leaps and bounds like we've been in this year, just the competition level is, is unreal. But Hooters has come a long way since they started back in 95 or 96 with this uh, Pro Cup series. And They've always been a, a, a great. Oh, would you ever believe that it had gone this big, this fast? And, and they're right. Each and every year, it continues to step up more and more each and every time out. In fact, coming up, we've got five races of the very near future. Take a look here at our next five races. Jennerstown Speedway on May 28th, USA International on June the 4th, Mansfield, Lake Erie, Myrtle Beach Speedway to close out the month of June. Take a look at uh, the schedule. Find a race close on track driver autograph session the close it up personal type of opportunity to meet these drivers and talk to these crews and have a great time and they'll find out these are just plain old guys doing a plain old job but having a whole lot of fun doing it you know i've said it many times this is a working man series a lot of these guys on pit road they take their vacation time to travel to the races uh, they give up an awful lot in terms of family life to chase the dream of racing and certainly a pleasure to bring it all to you here with the pro cup series field lining up for a restart jeff agnew once again the man out front saw that lead dissipate with the caution number six coming out but set for a restart here but Johnny Rumley has moved up a long ways, and how about Gary St. Amant out of nowhere has climbed into the top five? St. Amant deep in the field. I guess he must have put on that uh, best sock uh, he was talking about <laughs> earlier in the race. But nonetheless, the Jags.com Chevrolet wags back from the first four there on the restart. But Agnew brings the field up to speed at 161, now complete. As Agnew sets sail, and looked like a little bit of a challenge, A.J. Frank had Marty Lindley bumping on the uh, rear bumper cover. Well, Jeff Agnew got around Marty Lindley and he kind of set sail. A.J. Frank, can, does he have anything for, for Jeff Agnew at this point in time or is he just gonna sit there and wait until the end of the race? Four car freight train, the lap car of Martin Nesbitt drops in line, single file down to turn one, down to the inside is Woody Howard, that 55 car. They've struggled all day long, but Woody Howard has not given up. They've continued to, to persevere throughout the day here, this Lucas Oil 200, to try to bring that car home and salvage what they can in the points, and of course, that Miller Lite Rookie of the Year standings. Danny Sammons running six, on his way back to the front. A lot of young drivers in this thing, but we see a little bit more of the veterans making their way back to the front. Danny Sammons with a car that's just recently been refurbished. They went all the way through the car, uh, when it took the car all the way down to the frame, all new components for all practical purposes, a brand new race car. Pretty good battle right now. Brian Ross trying to get to the inside, working on Shelby Howard in the 20 car. We go back on board with Shelby Howard here on lap 165. Shelby Howard running his line in trouble for Kaufman. Looks like that motor has gone up in smoke. Joel Kaufman hits pit road. Joel Kaufman's just had a miserable day. Really didn't get going the way they wanted to. He had such a wonderful car a few weeks ago. Just not going his way here today. Riding along with Johnny Rumley, we'll be back to Indianapolis Raceway Park. Shelby Howard, the 20 car, starting to backslide through the field just a little bit. Randy Humphrey. Car 93 in that 10th position with Mike Laughlin Jr. and Joe Gata. All four cars fighting for position. Oh, little contact. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, in the inside wall. Look out, Joe. My, oh, my. And Kennington, can you imagine? Kennington hit the front of Humphrey's car, but didn't appear to be any damage. Oh, hang on, guys. There we go. Almost uh, added more insult to injury there. Randy Humphrey, the great clips Ford. By far, by far the best run we've had seen. Randy Humphrey had the best day we've 
ever seen here in Hooters Pro Cup action. Ended up this way, just a little bit, tried to get into gas just a little bit too hard. Got into the, the Howard car and spun himself around. Tough break. And of course, those cars running so close together, nowhere to go. Laughlin may have clipped just a little bit of the back of that 93 car to assist. Give a call to DJ Kennington, although he made contact, it did not appear that the nose of the 17 car was damaged at all. The SM Freight Incorporated Pontiac for Kennington, able to get away without damage, but Humphrey, a lot of damage. Let's take a look at it again. You see Humphrey just barely tags and a little bit of help, like you said, from Laughlin. Around he goes, Mike Laughlin down. Joe Gator, they're both correct and trying to get around. DJ Kennington, which way do I go? Which way do I go? And he gets on through there unscathed. Wow. Give, give a call to Corbett, got on the binders. Corbett able to get woke down in time and drive around that. Here's Humphrey. Randy Humphrey, sure enough, involved in that gene. And I want you to take a look, not just at the left side, but also on the right side of the race car. Big problems over there. They're going to have to cut a lot of junk metal away from the front end of this race car to make it safe so they don't have debris all over the racetrack. In addition to that, they also have the saw going on the front left and the front right trying to tear away sheet metal. So Randy Humphrey in a big mess on the front straightaway. Yeah, I'll call it a big mess, but those are metal fenders. They're steel, so they're a little bit tough to cut through really hard on the saw saw. Mike Laughlin Jr. involved, but still on the racetrack. And with that being said, let's take a moment and have a look at the Lucas Oil recap. We started out the afternoon, lap number one from the pole, Brian Ross. Outgunned from the outside by Clay Rogers. Rogers will lead. Lap 18, leaders in traffic. Ross gets into the balls. Van Oss goes around, brings out the first caution. Lap 35. On pit road goes the leader, Clay Rogers. Left front tire going down as the report. Ross takes over the lead. Hard contact for Travis Miller of the 98 on lap 72. He would be all right, but the car jumped and out of the race for the night. Lap 107, Tim Bainey Jr. As we watch the 06 of J.J. Pack get out of control, slide to the inside wall and bring out the caution. Lap 110, leaders pit, Marty Lindley takes over the point, but it's Shelby Howard making a bid to the inside. He was unsuccessful with the 20 car, and Lindley will put the Hooters Air Ford back up front. Lap 152. Marty Lindley and Jeff Agnew, a spirited battle, this time into turn one. Up the right track goes Lindley. Agnew goes to the point, and A.J. Frank, the rookie, makes his bid for second. And the most recent caution, Randy Humphrey. Little contact, and around goes Humphrey. Several more cars involved, several able to avoid. And that is your Lucas Oil recap. Here at the Lucas Oil 200, presented by Hair Auto Group. Field under caution, getting shaped up for a restart when we return here to Indianapolis Raceway Park and Hooters Pro Cup Series action. Set for the restart of the Lucas Oil 200, and Jeff Agnew brings the field back to start finish. Green is in the air from the inside. Martin Nesbitt trying to get a lap back with his number 88. We'll see if he's able to do it. I doubt it because Agnew has had a very strong car here in the late stages. Not only does he have a fast race car, but he has the better line. He has that outside groove. That's where everybody wants to be, and that's not the place you want to be if you're trying to make up a lot of ground. The NGA Hooters Golf Ford taken away. Now, what was that? You First time in his broke up career, Jeff Agnew behind the wheel of a Ford automobile. Pretty good battle for second, trying to shape up. Marty Lindley putting the pressure on A.J. Frank. Lindley can't leave too much room on the board there because Johnny Rumley is right there. And here comes the man, Brian Ross, trying to make it all the way on the outside of Gary St. Amant. Fifth place battle. St. Amant swings wide on the 88 of Nesbitt. Ross will follow in tow. I don't know, you got Rumley, St. Amant, Brian Ross, I mean, it's coming down to the money laps. It looks like these guys are all wake, make their way to the front. It's amazing. And add to it. Jeff Agnew, Marty Lindley, and the newcomer, A.J. Frank. A.J. Frank has not finished out of the top five in any event he's run in the Pro Cup Series. One event during 2004 and his two previous races here in the Northern Division. A.J. Frank has been very stout in his opening appearances here. 
Well, he's got a very good race car now, and it looks like it's staying with him. He's driving the wheels off it. Whether he can get it all the way to victory lane is going to be fun to watch. Brian Ross on the charge, pulls alongside Gary Salamont. Battle for fifth position. And Ross who slides up the racetrack and right on beyond Gary Salamont. Well, that's experience right there. Went in and went in hard and let that car slide like a sprint car. Let it slide up in front of Gary Saint-Amant. He knows his way around this racetrack. It's kind of on a loaded pool table. He knows where every, every piece is. Riding along with Johnny Rumley. He's got Brian Ross set to challenge for that fourth position. We'll be back to Indianapolis Raceway Park for more action. Boston. Not afraid to ruffle his feathers. I guess go ahead and do what you got to do. We need to go, and Brian Ross is on a mission. Brian Ross dispatched with Johnny Rumley. Good boy, you're clear. And now has worked his way around Marty Lindley for third. Pretty good battle, and now we see Rumley and St. Amant starting to dice it up. Well, my question is, is John, can Brian Ross run down the 45 and the 73? He's only got eight more laps to do it. He better stand up on that steering wheel. I know he's going to give us everything he's got, though. Time to get it done. Rumley right on the rear bumper of Lindley. Lap traffic, Joe Harrison Jr. coming into play as they work off the corner. Meanwhile, Agnew trying to scamper away. He's got a lot of horsepower. He's got a good handling race car. Would not have thought that to be the case early on as Agnew had been to pit road on several occasions in the first half of this event. Well, they pitted early and they got their tires early. They had to come home. They had to come home real early and take the tape off the grill because it was getting hot. But it looks like when it's your day to win, it's just your day to win, but it ain't over yet. Jeff Agnew took 54 tries to score his first Pro Cup Series win. To right, Scott, he's got six more circuits to get it done. This battle for third, pretty intense, back behind the leaders. Here's Agnew all by himself. He'll have to deal with some lap traffic. Looks like Tim Bainey Jr., the Grease Lightning Ford, directly ahead. And A.J. Frank has kind of fallen back. There's nothing he can do with him. Marty Lindley's hanging in there with only two right side tires. He's on those left side tires, 195 laps now. It's amazing he's still being able to stay in third. Agnew just strolling around, or at least that's the way it would appear from this side, down behind uh, the wheel of that race car. It's not an easy job, is it, Scott? What's amazing, it's a brand new race car. They showed up and raced this car this weekend with no laps on it. I, I can't believe the preparation is awesome. Superstitious, that's a green number on the side of that race car. Somebody better tell Jeff, quit. <laughs> no superstition there, but I tell you, Jeff Agnew would be a different face in victory lane if he can put it together. But if he does put it together, we'll have a repeat winner in, pit, in victory lane, though, in the form of some of the assistance given down on pit road. Elvin Rector was in victory lane with Marty Lindley one year ago right here at Indianapolis Raceway Park. Let's see if they're able to do it again. This battle has not cooled down. It is a battle for fourth. I stand corrected. Brian Ross just blew by these guys on his way, trying to get back to the front. Lindley is fourth, Rumley fifth, and St. Amon running in sixth. This is about the best battle on the racetrack right now. All these drivers looking for a good run. And St. Amon, he's had some tough luck to start the season off with. He needs a rebound to try to work his way back up at the points. Yeah, and he's going to do everything he can to run for it, but fifth place finish would be a good place to start his group. Here, Brian Ross, probably the best race car on the racetrack that got out of sync as far as a pit stop. Really tough white flag for Jeff Egg. Brian Ross has had the fastest car over the last several laps on the racetrack, but it's going to be too little, too late. Jeff Agnew on his final lap, his trip down the back straightaway towards checkered flag number 200 in the United Speed Alliance Racing Hooters Pro Cup Series. Only one more set of turns. Here's Jeff Agnew off the corner. The NGA Hooters Pro Golf Tour Ford to victory lane and race number 200 is going down in the history books as being the ownership of Jeff Agnew. A.J. Frank second, Brian Ross third, Lindley holds on for fourth, and Johnny Rumley rounds out your top five. The 10th career win for Jeff Agnew. He's on his way to Victory Lane. We'll be back with Victory Lane celebrations. This telecast of the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series is brought to you by Hooters Restaurants. Hooters makes you happy. Miller Lite, the official beer of USAR. Miller Lite, good call. Lucas Oil, Lucas Oil is the worldwide leader in heavy duty and high performance lubricants. 
and by Jackaroo Sauce. Jackaroo, served in some of the world's finest backyards. The pass to the lead, Jeff Agnew gets by Marty Lindley, takes home the victory here at the Lucas Oil 200. Jeff Agnew in victory lane and ready to celebrate. And a hearty congratulations to, uh, let's see, the 1998 champion of this series, I think, who comes back to win the 200th Hooters Pro Cup race. Congratulations, Jeff. I want to know, go back early in the race. He had big, big problems when you tore up the front of the race car. The engine started overheating. Take me from that point. Oh, yeah, something happened down here in turn one, and I got into uh, to Danny there, and it messed the front end up, and uh, the car got up like 270, and we had to come in and pull some tape. But... Uh, you know, guys was keeping me informed what to do and what not to do, and uh, knew we had a good car. It's first time out in this new Ford, and uh, just great to have a win. You know, NGA Hooters has been behind us, and great sponsor, and Elvin Rector's done a great job on the race car, and the guys have just done a super good job. I kept watching those restarts every time thinking, does he have what it takes to pull AJ? It was no problem. It didn't seem like. Well, it's such a good car. I mean, it uh, it took off good, and when we got out in the corner, it, it just accelerated great off the corner, and and pulled all the way down. Uh, Clements Motors, great job there. Billy has chassis. Uh, just thanks to everybody. His 10th career win, Gene. So it took him 54 starts to get there, and he hasn't let up yet. Agnew, your winner. Look at your first nine finishers, including Mike Laughlin Jr. Finishes where he started in seven. I thought A.J. Frank had a heck of a day today. Shelby Howard still had a great day. Kind of fell apart there towards the end, but that could be a lot of reasons why they'll find out when they get back to the Eric stop. Corbett and Lonnie Rush also with a good day. Tim Bainey hangs on. Benny Gordon dropping a lap after the penalty. Never able to make that up. Humphrey struggles uh, after what was going to be looked like his best run of his career here in the Pro Cup Series. He'll finish 19. Clay Rogers with a great race car, had those problems with the battery, had to come in, put another battery in it. Sam Pallone, Jimmy Spencer. And Travis Miller, injured, but checked out A-OK. -okay. A.J. Frank is with Steven. Has the same car owner ever led both the North and the South Series at the same time? I mean, the, the math is preliminary, but A.J., we think you just took over the lead in the North Series. Wow. Um, if we did, that is awesome. I mean, we... Uh, we came out this year as a team, and we planned to set a precedent in Hooters, but uh, I didn't think we'd come this far this quick. Uh, you know, uh, it's just an yeah, awesome deal, man. I got to thank everybody here. Um, my whole pit crew did an awesome job in the pits today. We worked endless hours this week building this brand new car. The American Iron Horse uh, Johnny Suzuki Bear Transport Ford was just awesome today. Uh, partly because of our, uh, you know, our Billy Hess car, our RE suspension shocks, and uh, automotive specialist motor. Just uh, really got to thank all those people. Uh, without them, the combination uh, would not be there. And uh, it was a lot of fun today. I mean, we passed a lot of race cars uh, coming from the back. Uh, overcame a lot, you know, uh, two clutches this weekend. And I just couldn't be happier. I think uh, we, we, we definitely uh, uh, made a statement today, and uh, we're, we're letting these guys know we're going to be here all year. A.J. Frank also picks up the Miller Lite Rookie of the Race Award, $1,000. Started all the way back in 17th. But brought that car actually from the tail of the pack to finish in second. Gary St. Amant picks up the Hard Charger Award. Started back at 21st, comes home sixth here this weekend. The Grease Lightning Blast the Pack Award goes to Brian Ross, leading 75 circuit here at IRP. You don't think it's tough in traffic out there? Take a look at the front right of Brian Ross's race car. He finished in third position, but not without a real tough tussle from Marty Lindley. I think that one belongs to uh, Shelby Howard, Shelby. though. Yeah, Shelby. Uh, yeah, we had some uh, miscommunications in the pits, you know, and uh, we thought we was going to pit first, and then I thought I heard something on the radio. No, we're going to leave you out. We're going to pit Joe first, stay out. So uh, I knew right then that, you know, having to come from the back like that was going to be tough. But, you know, we bought this Beco uh, U.S. insurance uh, forward back up to third, you know, so after start last. So we're pretty happy about it. You know, I want to thank Darren Odell for letting me have a shot to get back in this stuff, and uh, it was a pretty good day. Not only that, a few more laps, and I think you had the 45 car in your sight, too. It looked like the distance was closing. Yeah, well, I, I run him down, but running him down and passing here, it was getting pretty slick and trying to run around on the apron. It ain't real fun here, and, and, and he was running in the middle, and the, and the top was getting pretty, uh, you know, uh, it was just a lot of marbles and stuff everywhere. So it was, it was getting pretty tough at the end, but we had fun. Respectable run for Brian Ross. Look at the point standings, and yes, indeed, A.J. Frank takes over the lead by 17. Pretty good race right now for this Northern Division Championship. 
And the next Grease Lightning at race date is the naturally fresh 250 at Jennerstown Speedway in Jennerstown, Pennsylvania, Saturday night, May the 28th. A lot of action coming your way in this Pro Cup Series. You can keep up with it at USARProCup.com. Our thanks to Racing Electronics, provider of our racing communications. And we also want to thank Best Golf Cars, providing our at-track transportation at these Pro Cup Series events. Onboard images bring you the in-car camera shots we've seen throughout the day. And iCar, the official timing and scoring information system of the USAR. Congratulations to Team 7 Motorsports and driver Jeff Agnew. For Scott Sutherland and Stephen Cox, I'm Gene Crane.